Welcome back everyone to PC Monster Reviews. Today I wanted to change up what we were doing a little bit. So I've had some questions about the operation of the screens um, inside these new Mazdas. So I just wanted to do a video and cover everything that's inside them because I, there's a lot to go over. Now a lot of these screens here that you're going to be seeing in the center dash in the uh, description down below, I'm going to try to timestamp kind of where we cover everything. Um, this first section of the video is going to be covering your dash, your so your tachometer, speedometer, uh, the center TFT display, whole nine yards on that. And then we will move on over to your uh, new operating system here. This is going to be covered in the Mazda 3s and the CX-30s. I assume that this operating system will be going into all the other vehicles at a later time. Um, but you still have the old operating system on this computer in your CX-5, CX-9, uh, CX-3, Miata, and Mazda 6. I know I was missing one. Um, so we'll come back to the middle. Once again, I'll timestamp it. So skip along to wherever you want to, to see how to operate these screens here. So if you guys like the content that you see today, please do like and subscribe. Uh, your subscriptions really, really help out with the growth of the channel, and I really appreciate each and every one of them. So let's dive right on in. Make sure we're focused on the back over here. Okay, so the first screen I want to cover here, this is the one that I traditionally leave my personal vehicle on all the time. So this screen is going to show your lane departure warning system, your lane keep assist, and your uh, radar cruise control, the follow distance on that. So in the center screen here, when the vehicle is able to read the lines on the road for your lane departure warning system and lane keep assist, these will fill in to where it's going to be a little bit more white, a little bit thicker, where it shows that it's actually seeing um, the lines on the road. So we'll come right on over here. This is going to be your cruise control. All your cruise control setup is over here. So when you put your cruise control on, that's with it off when you put it on you'll see down here at the bottom this is going to be for the speed that you're setting your cruise control at over here on the right hand side this is your selector for your follow distance for radar cruise control each one of those little rectangles that goes out down there is right at about i'd say about three quarters of a car length is what that follow distance is so of course when you're first learning and getting used to it um, I would set it out to the four. Um, really, um, it takes a lot to get used to that this vehicle is going to slow down. That if it's got the auto hold function to it, which a lot of them are getting now, uh, you are going to come all the way down to zero miles per hour behind a vehicle if it stops at a red light or a stop sign or something like that. Um, so it's definitely a big thing for a user to get used to when you're coming out of a vehicle that does not have that kind of feature. So that pretty much covers this sheet or uh, this page here. You're also going to have a digital speedometer up here in the top, which is kind of nice for some people if you don't like the analog speedometers. Um, if you do like the analog one, uh, we'll get to one later on it. So as well, since we're introing this section here, you're going to have all of your uh, estimated fuel economy over here, miles of the vehicle down here, temperature outside, and then this is estimated miles till empty on the uh, gas that you've got. Of course, temperature, analog, uh, gas meter there, and then your uh, tachometer here. So next sheet, to get over to it, you hit this info button down here, one press, Next sheet is going to be your analog speedometer. So, of course, you can uh, change that to uh, kilometers in the settings if you so selected to. Um, so, not too much to show on this one here. Next one, right in the middle, you're still going to have your analog on the outside. You'll still get the ring around the outside. But this is going to be your driving information orientation and then your average fuel economy on this vehicle. This one's 8.9. It literally drives two feet and then stops moving that's that's all this vehicle's done since we've gotten it here and then right back to that main sheet so a lot of the information that used to be hidden in all the other um in all the other pages on the old operating system have now been moved around 
So you'll see with this trip button on the far side here, you can get your trip down here in the bottom left hand corner. You can get your trip A, trip B, and then um, your overall miles on the vehicle. A little more to cover back here. You've got the rest of your Bluetooth controls on this side here. So volume control here, your source changing, and then you can also um, skip tracks here, answering phone calls, hanging up phone calls. And then once again, that's to cycle through all the different pages on here. Right side here, we'll have it focus up on this a little bit closer. Cruise control on, off, setting, resetting, canceling, radar cruise control here. Um, and then once again, changing the follow distance. All right. So now we'll move on over to the new operating system that Mazda is running in. Once again, this is the Mazda 3 and the CX-30 have this right now. In years to come, I imagine we'll be getting the uh, this operating system on every other vehicle. So starting from the top on it, you're gonna have information. This used to be all the way on the left-hand side. Um, it was called apps on the old operating system. So it's gonna have your fuel efficiency monitor in it here. So this is the current drive and then the history for it. You're gonna have your travel link. So if you've got Sirius in the vehicle, you can set up your travel link um, and you can get your traffic updates and stuff like that through there. And then vehicle status monitor. So this is where you'd come where you can set your maintenance reminders. Um, if there's any kind of warning on the dash, when the little ex yellow exclamation point, it'll be under here and describe kind of briefly what's going on with the vehicle. So coming all the way back out. Entertainment, haven't really changed that much versus the old operating system. So here shows we're on 95.9 on FM. If you push down on the center dial again, you get your source list where you can select through FM, AM, XM, Pandora, Bluetooth, uh, USB 1, 2, and then of course, um, if you had a USB or your phone hooked up via your charging cord, um, it'll pop up in one of those USB 1 and 2s. One will be the, we'll come down here, right there, and then USB 2 is in the center um, compartment. So we'll back out of that one there. Of course, your favorites list. You've got the station list after you've already scanned for your area. You've got everything in there. You can do manual tuning controls if you know just offhand what the uh, station that you want is. You can just spin away. And then manual tuning there. Once again, just spin away on it. And then of course you can change things like the FM settings where you get, if you want the HD radio stations in there, live events and stuff like that. Um, of course they pick up on a kind of a different bandwidth for the vehicle. So and then all the way on the bottom, audio settings. So you can change your bass, treble, everything like that. Um, you can set your listening position in the car. So this is part of that upgraded Bose surround system where you can actually change where um, Right now it's set on all seats, but you can have it focused on the driver's seat as well. Your fade balance. So in stereo mode, you can do standard. So you get a little diagram actually what it does. I'll slide that up a little bit closer so you guys can kind of see right there. Or you can do linear. Oops, hold on. There we go, linear. So can't really tell much of a difference on there. It's kind of silly. Um, so you've got center point as well. Once again, a little diagram of what it looks like, what's going on. So this creates the, um, so it's basically, as it says in the lower right hand corner, the virtual surround listening experience, more or less what it does is just puts the audio in the center of the car. And then we've got audio pilot as well. So this is what, there's sensors in the vehicle that are actually going to sense for um, road noise and um, so road noise, wind, stuff like that, and compensate and try to eliminate that sound in the car. 
So back out, back out, and come back on down here. So communication, when you go into this, if you had a phone hooked up to this, it's gonna be your contacts, it's gonna be your call history, missed calls, stuff like that. And here, navigation. Now, none of these new vehicles, none of the Mazda 3s and none of the CX-30s come standard with navigation in the vehicle. Of course, they've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto though, and I'm assuming that's where Mazda wants most of their people going to. Um, but if you do want a native navigation in the vehicle, uh, say you don't have an Android or iPhone um, phone to hook up to this car, uh, you can still purchase the SD card and have it installed into the vehicle. And then coming down to the bottom to the settings. So in vehicle displays lets you change your dash setup. Um, the so first one, just like in the old setup, your active drive display. So the heads up display, you can adjust the height, uh, brightness, tilt control, all that stuff there. So the center display is going to be this display that we're actually looking at right now. So you can turn off the display, change how it brightens, um, make the ambient display, the clock, and then you can also change the instrument cluster. So um, this will change, you can see in the diagram there how it changes up the displays around that center dial. Boom, back up. So sound settings again, gonna be the same setup as we saw earlier through the media section or the entertainment section. So safety settings, allows you to change what um, settings you want on, what you don't want on. So you can turn off your cruise control, radar cruise control there if you don't want it. Uh, you can turn off the driver attention alert. We can also go through and um, like this one right now has where it'll warn you if you're pushing the gas and the brake at the same time. Um, so you can turn that off as well. So come back again so your vehicle settings here what that's going to do is you can turn on and off your rain sensing wipers you can turn off the uh tons of things you can change in here so connectivity settings in here is going to be uh where all your bluetooth settings are uh wi-fi settings actually yeah so with the My Mazda smartphone app, you can do a wireless hotspot. And then the final one is gonna be your system settings here. So that's gonna be your clock, voice recognition, whether you want this in miles per hour or kilometers, PSI on the, also in that center display there, if one of your tires is low, it'll show you and it'll show you all the PSI of your tires if one um even if just one is low it'll show you the psi for all of them in there so you know which one to fill up so that's a fantastic change of the old operating system that mazda was running so and then you can also change to where you can update your grace note uh database on there so that's like if you're playing something on the radio or through bluetooth it'll show the album artwork for where that song's from back out so that's some of the biggest changes that Mazda's made going into their new uh setups there so hold on we'll go back to the main screen so this is from the home screen here if you bump your big dial to the left you get to notifications in there if there's anything that the vehicle wants you to know um it'll pop up in there so once again, this is Mazda's new operating system that they'll be bringing into all of their future vehicles. Uh, the center display with your tachometer and everything, this is gonna be the TFT display that they are starting to include in a lot of their new vehicles. Um, in the higher trim levels, uh, it's going to be standard on the CX models, or on the CX-30 and the Mazda 3 right now. So look forward to seeing that. Uh, more and more on the lower trim levels and the other vehicles in the years to come. And then, once again, last time, this operating system is only going to be in the CX-30 and the Mazda 3 right now. 
So uh, this one here, you'll probably see showing up in the 2021 models of the CX-5, CX-9, CX-3, if that's still around, um, the and the Mazda 6. Thank you guys so much for your time today. If you guys have any questions, I really hope this helped. Uh, but please feel free to ask in the comment section down below. If you like the content that you saw today, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to the channel. Um, I am going to start tying this video into each of the reviews that I do. That's why I wanted to knock this one out sooner rather than later. Um, and before the other reviews, I'm going to start tying this in to when I do my interior um, look arounds, walk arounds. Um, just so you guys are able to get this in-depth look at this because this is a big change in Mazda's new setups. Thank you guys so much for your time today and have a good rest of your day.